Hello and welcome to my Let's Play Civilization 6 Gathering Storm Apocalypse Mode on DT as the Maya. The new update came out and we're gonna play it. Now, what does the Maya do? Let's quickly go over it. I think they're not very strong, but I think they're very fun. So, and that's what counts, right? So, the Maya have non-capital cities within six tiles of the capital gain 10% to all yields. So, if I can fit in many cities in close range of the capital, they all get plus 10% yields. Nice! The capital itself won't get it. So, we may have to consider that in the placement of Pingala, who may not go to the capital. We will see. Maybe we have to boost another city to the the max. Then um, other non-capital cities receive minus 15% to all yields. So all the cities that are seven or more tiles away from my capital get this penalty. This kind of cancels out domination, which is fine for me. I'm not a person who does domination all that often. Then plus five combat strength to units within six tiles of the capital. Again, this means it makes it easier to defend our land. Of course, the city may be six tiles directly, exactly six tiles away from the capital, and therefore the terrain of the city may be eight tiles away from the capital, and therefore if I fight in that terrain, the units won't get that. We gotta yeah. keep that in mind, because very early on, especially on DT, this plus five combat strength is quite useful and should be considered when fighting warfare. So, then the other stuff. My up. Settling adjacent to fresh water and coast do not provide extra housing. So, coast and fresh water, no extra housing. Instead, each farm provides additional plus one housing. Crucial additional. I made another video where I misread that. So, it's really 1.5 housing we get per farm. So once we have two farms, we are equal to a fresh water city. Still, it means we need to build a builder first. So there's a chance our capital will be very busy building builders for our other cities. And the government district building is very in an interesting choice. Because we could go for Ancestral Hall or the other one. One is great for tall and the other one is great for builder. As Maya, you want to go tall with tons of builders. I hope we have at least one desert tile for the, for the pyramids, because pyramids would be crucial, as we want to plant many farms. Also, they give plus one gold, which is nice, I guess. Then plus one amenity for every luxury adjacent to the city center. That's nice. But I mean, if it's, if it's plantation luxuries, then I will probably not plot my city in the middle. Instead, the observatory, which replaces the campus and doesn't get any of the normal campus adjacency benefits. Not a single one. Instead it gets plus two science for adjacent plantations and plus one science for adjacent farm or district types. You gotta keep that in mind. And then the Hulche, a Mayan unique era, um, unique ancient era ranged unit replaces the archer, that's good. It's stronger than the archer um, I know it's three combat strength stronger than the archer and it also has plus five combat strength when fighting a wounded unit. So it has basically plus eight against them over the normal archer. That's a power level that is comparable with one of the strongest early game sifts, Nubia. But actually that's even stronger but Nubia gets more mobility so and within Let's say this is the defensive version of Nubia. Not made for domination, but I mean, if I have two or three of those units within six tiles of my cities, yeah, I can't deal with that until they have crossbows. And that's quite a while. So I think abilities are all fun. I think this is way too much RNG depending. And let's go to the advanced setup. We play on a Pangea on apocalypse mode. 
and um, with legendary start position hopefully getting lots of plantations. Um, of course disaster intensity 4, standard speed, standard size and DT difficulty of course. Let's see what we get. So the apocalypse mode um, adds new disasters, larger and more impactful versions of existing disasters. I'm curious to find out what that means. And there are also more natural one, no, not more, new natural wonders in the game now. I hope we find them. Sadly, I can't do anything in the setting that forces them into the game. So if you're lucky, we get new. If you're unlucky, we get old. And it also adds a new unit that I have not really a clue what it does and when it comes. But we will find out in this Let's Play. I should have talked about all this during the loading screen, shouldn't I? Because my computer loads a bit longer than most other streamers. stirrings of life beneath water to the great beasts of the stone age to man taking his first upright steps you have come far now begins your greatest quest from this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars lady six sky great warrior mother of dos palas and wat kabnal lead your people into a new dynasty let your reach grow long, so you may conquer your enemies near and far. The gods will guide you, and you will, in turn, guide your loyal citizens to victory. Am I crazy, or do other leaders have a slightly longer text? I like her design. This teal colored jewelry is really pretty. Hmm. I should get something like that for myself. <laughs> well, maybe not now. Certainly not going out for shopping. Could always do online shopping, but still. Can't wait. It's not as if I would play with face cam, am I right? Um, so, yeah, plantations are crucial, because the observatory, if I have a bunch of plantations, I can easily get plus four or maybe even plus six of those campus. If I do some farming, then I can get plus five, maybe two plantations, two farms, that's four tiles out of six surrounding an observatory, that's, that's plus five, and that's likely to happen if I have a bunch of plantations. The problem is, if I have no, only a sparse amount of plantations, then the best I get is basically a plus three maybe, when you find bananas or something, plus two from the bananas, and once I got the plantation of course, and plus one from two farms, if I get them, or maybe some districting, I'll see. I mean with every SIF, it's not that hard to get a plus two campus district. And that's what I mean with if this, if the best you get is plus two or plus three, <clears throat> then that's not that amazing because other sieves can get that too. What is amazing is stuff like Australia that can get plus seven campuses and shit like that. I have three mountains, that's plus three. Oh, and because of these three mountains, it's breathtaking. Well, plus seven for you. <clears throat> or is it plus six? How much do Australia get from the breathtaking? I think it's plus three or four. <clears throat> but yeah, Australia with good land, ridiculous. This if with good with good land, really good, but not as ridiculous as Australia. But let's be honest, this if with bad land, pretty bad. Australia with bad land, pretty mediocre. And that's where Korea comes in in my argument, because Korea with good land, good. Korea with bad land, still good, because all their campus district get plus four. Yeah, sure, Australia with ridiculously good land will beat Korea. 
But Korea doesn't need to have ridiculously good land to be good. That's why Korea is, in my opinion, the best science safe. Because they do not depend as much on the RNG. I mean, it maybe depends how you play. If you're a person that restarts anyway until you get an amazing start, then Australia is your way to go. But if you're a person that takes the next best start, then Korea will give you much more success. That's also why I rank Rome so high, because Rome is really, really um, a flexible civilization that is good under any circumstance and can choose its direction while playing, because all its benefits are just basic but good and come in early. Hey monk! Yeah, the Frontier stuff added a new mode. Okay, what does the, front, the, the Frontier add? Well, um, of course there are YouTube videos from Firaxis uh, where you can just put in Sid Meier Civilization 6 fr New Frontier and then you should find videos about it. So, what is the first thing that was released today? Because the whole thing is a bunch of releases throughout a year, so it will go into next year. Today we just got the Mayas and Gran Colombia and the Apocalypse mode. We play with as the Maya, the Gran Colombia with Simon Bolivar is an AI that I put into the Sif, to the game, and Apocalypse mode is um, is turned on. And um, the Apocalypse mode adds new natural disasters and makes the current one natural disasters more nasty as per description for me it's the first time experiencing it so i'm just as curious as you all are to see how it works then the maya you can see here and i, I will afterwards quickly show grand colombia and their traits but i will not go over it i will do that once we play as Gran Colombia. So, and this Frontier Pass, you pay money once and then you will get all the updates at its release, all the content, all the new SIFs and the new other content. Not all is yet, um, what, how do you say, um, they haven't shown what exactly it is. We know there will be new SIFs and some new modes and some new resources and stuff, but they haven't really revealed what exactly is coming, what SIFs and what modes they have in mind. So we will see that, but they have already shown the dates and like a timeline on what is coming. And for now we got a few new resources, I actually don't even know which ones. I've seen in the trailer Maze, so we'll see that. And um, I feel like the loading time is longer than usual. Then the two new sifts and the apocalypse mode for now. Yeah. And I think the two new sifts are good. I mean, as in, I don't think this sif is all that good because it's too much dependent on RNG. I think she can be really good or she can be very, very bad. While Grand Colombia, in my opinion, is potentially the best domination Sif in the whole game. I'll go that far. In general, it's a decent Sif, but for domination, Grand Colombia seems quite OP to me because everything they get is strong and impactful. And I'm someone who does usually do domi when I do domination, I don't like to build encampments all too much. So I miss out a little bit on the great generals. I maybe get one and not really much more than that. It's still enough for me to get domination done. But with Grand Columbia, I get one every era for free. That's ridiculous. This means I don't need to build the stupid encampments and can focus on economy districts that 
allow me to upkeep my army and progress faster through the tech tree where I will also get the unique unit which is also really good and the unique improvement which is also a really good unique improvement all especially since it gives food um, if I remember correctly it gives food production and money therefore ideal for domination so it's it's just bonkers that civilization and I wouldn't know if I would prefer anyone else for a pure domination victory I mean the Ottomans are pretty good because of the siege stuff and the loyalty stuff that's really good um, Scythia in my opinion got nerfed too hard oh every single add-on and the the last year's update all nerfed Scythia directly or indirectly that's why I'm not thinking on release of Civ 6 Scythia was broken they were so good at domination it was ridiculous but they made so many nerfs they made like six different changes that nerfed Scythia so I don't think they are that good anymore also I get a feeling that my game froze ah Okay, yeah, my game crashed. I'm sorry for that. We'll start it anew. Um, I will put a timestamp in the comments. I hope I don't forget. Because I really don't want to re-record all my talking. <laughs> Oh, you won religious, your first religious victory with Scythia. Nice. Or your first religious victory was with Scythia. Yet a unique improvement for faith generation. It's actually quite underrated, I think, because it can give you a lot of faith. And if you're going for religious, I mean, it's otherwise a terrible unique improvement. <coughs> the, 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 what's it called? The little stones with the flag looks cute. That Scythia gets. The faith generation is pretty good and so if you're going for a religious game where faith generation is key and the rest is less relevant pretty good oh if you're not going to play Civ anyway anytime soon I think you can wait with the buying the pass you can pay you can always buy later but of course if you're eager to play Civ now I mean, I mean I I, I stream and everything <laughs> I stream and I have a YouTube channel so that's a good reason for me to get it on the release day but then again I'm a bit burned out of Civ but not because I wouldn't enjoy it more because I played it so much I need some new content and now that new content is out I really want to get it and if you're like, I don't know, I'm not sure, then you can always watch people play it and then decide if you want it. So let's see if a mod self-activated. Because that's what mods sometimes do. No, just a random crash. I hope the game is not... Creaking. Oh god, now I have to... What's this? That wasn't here before. Okay, sure. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's find her again. Here, Lady of the Six Sky. Not on Prince, DT. Standard. Bangia. Yep. Yeah. Good. And then the advanced setup. I want this jersey. I want Simon Bolivar in the game because he's new. Um, resources, no resources is fine. Start position legendary. Apocalypse mode is on. I think the rest we can leave it as it is and see if it works this time. Come on, game, don't disappoint me. Oh, 
Oh, the healing when killing a unit counts for religious units as well? Wow, that's really good. So Scythia is really a good religious victory sieve then. I didn't think about that. Yeah, I have at the moment lots of free time. Um, which I've been spending a lot in Animal Crossing. Um, I was surprised that I liked the game so much. Um, and now, of course, Sif will get its cake again. Because I had... I've s I'm at home, mostly. I'm not going out for D&D and stuff. I'm going less to meet up. I'm not going out to meet up with friends and stuff. Something I otherwise did, and now I'm just staying at home, being safe. And... Um, Playing Sif is ideal for a time like this, but I'm so glad that this still comes out, that this came out now, because it's new content for me since I've played Sif so much. I've got thousands of hours in Sif 6 already, and I've got even more in Sif 5. I love these kind of games, um, but um, I just needed something a little bit new to play. Yeah, I've been streaming a little bit less. Um, I've, I've had um, a few rough weeks. And um, before that, I was sick for a week. It wasn't a virus, it was probably just a normal flu. It felt more like that. Symptoms were different. Um, but yeah, I didn't. Yeah, because um, I have started a few streams. Respectively, I also started to record YouTube video right now that the Sweden Let's Play is going on. Actually, there, there I could release a new episode, I think. Um, and... Um, yeah, I had it in like the second week of, of lockdown. Or halfway into the first week, something like that, I had the flu. And I was, at first I was like, oh my god, do I, does this mean do I have corona now? So I went to check what the symptoms are that I have to have to have corona. But the symptoms didn't align too well. I mean, obviously some symptoms do because there is quite a list. But the major ones were not there. I had no coughing. So my throat, my... Uh, obviously I wasn't feeling well because the flu is the flu, but... Um, yeah, but I, I had some games and they were all early war. I had started a few Sif games, excited to go for culture or science or try a new strategy idea I had, or I had found a natural wonder and was like, ooh, let's play around with that. And every single time I met some scumbag Spain or such, or some other garbage Sif that, f that met me. I met them on like turn 15 and they declared war on me on turn 20 and sent their 8 warriors and additional units they built directly to my flatland capital where I just finished my second military unit. And I died. So that was my recent experience with Civilization 6 when I tried to record something. And that's rather frustrating if that happened. If you start a game, have an exciting start, and are into it, and then you die on like turn 27. And then you try again with another map, and the exactly same thing happens. And that's the, that's the toughest thing about the DT, because you just can't do anything against them ruffle stomping you with with eight warriors, at, at least not within the first 30 turns, because it takes about, it takes between five and 10 turns to build your own warrior. And you usually build first a scout to get the goodie huts and stuff and see more land so you know where to settle. And now you could argue, well, to prevent getting killed early, you should just build a bunch of warriors. 
Sure, I could spend my earliest turns building three additional warriors. The point is, if then no one declares war on me, I would be in a much, much, much better situation if I would have just built a scout, a builder and a settler. <sighs> and that's, that's the risk. Either you play for the snowball and risk dying, or you don't play for the snowball and don't risk dying, but you also will have guaranteed a much slower game. So, and everyone who's regularly watching me knows I play risky and greedy. So I will not go for the slow but safe play. Okay. So we have coast, we have a river, a river that's useless. <laughs> um, we have plantation here, plantation here, two plantation. That's exact, oh no, one down here. But none of them is close enough to get a campus plus four. That's exactly what I meant, what I don't like about the civilization. You don't get that easily a good campus. Um, let's move into the desert. I want to see how big it is. Gypsum. Our regional seems to be diced. That's good. That's a plantation resource. So maybe we have somewhere a bit more. The quarry is also good to get early pyramids. And we have some forests to chop. Damn, is this land bad. Oh my god, this land is really bad. It's all flat. Do you see that? We have... One, two, three. I see three. Okay, if this, but this is not the. I see three workable hills. This will be a plantation, say a plantation. So, for late game production, I have three mines. What does all the food give me? If I do not get a great campus, I can get Mac. If I manage, if I build a campus here, plus two, surrounded with farms, it gets to plus four at best. Plus four is the best campus I get. That's okay. And if I surround this land with food, I have a lot of farms here. But what do I do with all this population? I don't get the production and that there is coast means I can't fit in any cities down here therefore if I want the cities within six tiles I have to build one here 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 and here let's show you quickly the coast. I will not take this start this the start is garbage yeah coastal stuff Maya doesn't want coastal because you can't settle it it doesn't give housing you can't place farms on coast coast is bad I don't think you're sadistic for... I mean, maybe you are sadistic, but I don't think that that is um, a reason. I, I like too when, play, when players on YouTube and stuff also upload occasionally their failures. Um, I personally like that because it shows it happens to them too. It's, I think it's great for beginners that are a bit struggling and have been dying a bunch of time and are getting insecure if they're good enough. And then seeing that someone who usually regularly beats DT quite easily also occasionally just gets obliterated feels good. It, may, it, it feels relieving because you know that it's okay. You're not just bad, it happens to them too. And that's why I think it's good. The problem is, um, the videos, the videos where I do, the, the, the most viewers you get on videos that are meme worthy. You just have to watch when, when Potato McWhiskey had its biggest Skype, uh, biggest, um, increase in viewers on his YouTube channel was when he started to make meme videos. 
for Sif. His his viewer count doubled during during that time. And it's not what I do. I mean, I, I could do it, but I don't want to. What I like to do is to play with weird rules, like some some extra challenge on top of winning the game normally. I, I like that. Like the one city challenge or the lose your capital and win anyway challenge. Stuff like that. That's what I like to do. Besides, of, of course, just playing the game normally. I also like mods, but um, if I play a mod, the fewer the fewer numbers are usually only half as high as with with other let's plays. So I will still play mods because I just enjoy it, and it's not as if I would make money with this, not at all. With two hundred fifty plus subscribers, you're you're not relevant. That's okay. But still, it is. Um, it feels good when you know the pe there are people that watch your videos and there are people that like your videos. It feels good. It encourages me to make more. Do they have flatland start bias? I mean... Honey! Oh, there is honey! Nice! There is a little bees! What that requires animal husbandry? Oh, interest, interesting! Animal husbandry for honey! <laughs> interesting, I like that. The maze, what does maze require? Is it a bonus resource or what? Why doesn't it show it for maze? But it shows for... Here it shows, requires mining. What does the maze require? It doesn't show. Um, before we restart, because this is... This is a huge pile of garbage. I wanna see what maze actually is. Bonus, plus two gold. Farm! Okay, so it's like rice. It's a bonus resource then. It's like rice and um, and wheat. Wow! So it's only no, it has it has gold on it. So it's a farmable luxury resource, I guess. Not a plantation. Holy shit! Is this start bad? All flat plains. Very little hills. Flatland luxuries that are not plantations holy shit is this start bad this is why starts like this are the reason why i th i consider this safe low tier because when you get starts like this it's just basically a safe with bad traits yeah you can surround your district with farms and get a plus three but i don't want to surround my district with farms takes two bi two full builders and I still want to build the other districts and farms don't give production if you're lucky a flooded river gives some production but it's still no comparison to a mine that can give like four production from the first stirrings of life beneath <sighs> yeah I got when I uploaded the Maya um, my opinion on the Maya, I got quite a bit of shit. And the, uh, the first half hour I got quite a bit of dislikes on my video. And many people disagreeing in the comments. Even though I of course stated at the beginning. 
This is my analysis and my opinion based on my personal experiences, so yours may differ. But yeah, that's what happens when you criticize something other people like. But I just, yeah, it's, it, she can be good, but if we judge people, if we judge civilizations on their potential and not on how good they may generally be, but on how good they can be, then Australia is the best civilization in the whole game for any victory type. Then Australia is just broken. Even though Australia can also be pretty bad if your land isn't appealing. I mean, this the start I just got would be for Australia just as bad. Korea could make it work because they could at least build a plus four campus on a hill. <sighs> or some safe could go for a for a religious game with this flat garbage. Egypt at least could make good use of the flood flooded river. I mean, the the, the uh, f start flat like this is for every civilization kind of bad. There are just some civilizations that are not as hard punished on it as others. Of course, I've also been wrong about some estimations. My um, the value I have for Mali for Mansa Musa has dropped over the over the past year more and more. At the beginning, I thought, okay, the production penalty is bad, but the rest is amazing, and I had my very first few games with the Mali were ridiculous. I got it was outrageous. I had so much money, could make such good la use of the land. But then I had some games with Mali, where I just had Egypt next to me, and they came with their with their chariot archers on my flat desert. What do you do as Mali against chariot archers on flat land? There's nothing you can do against that. Your production is shit. And at the first 30 turns, your money doesn't kick in yet. Especially if your trade routes go to your only neighbor that is killing you right now. And you don't even get money. So Mali is also very RNG dependent. Where are the plantations? I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a money start. The tundra is disgusting. <laughs> this is funny, um, <coughs> but it's not. What do you think, chat? Do we have many people in the chat? Yeah, a few. What do you guys, guys and gals, think? Should we keep this start or reroll again? I think this start is doable, and this start screams for, for this wonder. This wonder on this start will be ridiculous. But then again, I still don't have many. Um, what is bad about this start? Um, first of all, we are the Maya, so this start isn't that great. We have not a single plantation here, and it seems our regional luxuries, none of them is plantations. So we will get all the good campuses, we will get none of them. Our science will be okay not outrageous at all then it lacks hills i have one two three four five hills i have five hills that's it that's not much and um i will also move away from this tile for sure and we have tundra up here so out of the cities that have to be within six tiles of my capital Guess two will be Tundra cities, and Tundra is just not as good. 
I mean, if I'm lucky, then there's a natural. Well, no. That three is the appearance. Yeah, land is also not that appealing. Do we play this? You know what? I make a quick save. And we do um, two or three more restarts. If they are all bad, we go back to this. I think this is playable, but I'm not really... It doesn't excite me. Because it has zero plantations. So the best campus we get is plus three. That, that's, that's the peak our campus have. And the land surrounding it will not be all that much different. And tundra is really bad. And it's again rather flat. The Great Zimbabwe would be amazing because it was, it was filled with bonus resources. Filled with cattle. And I would probably go for God of the Open Sky which gives culture from cattle. Uh, from pastures. Which would be good, but you don't play the Maya to get culture from pastures, right? It's kind of sad if you have to take the pasture pantheon and Arnold going for a plantation pantheon as the Maya. So yeah, episode one is a bunch of reloads, which you can expect when playing the Maya and you really want them to be strong, it will be a bunch of reloads. I wonder what the start bias is. Maybe I should check that on the wiki, if they already, what their start bias is. Because if it's not a bunch of plantations, then then the Maya drops again in my ranking. They need plantations to be viable. They need. <laughs> nice. Primordial with Inca sounds fun. A neat side effect of playing the Inca is your start bias. Hills and mountains. That's, I mean, your terrace farms, sure, but it also means you can place really good districts. Really good science districts. Of course, the downside of the Inca is a bit... You kind of want the hills next to the mountains for your terrace farms, but it's also the best spot for holy sites and campus districts. In no game will you ever have enough hills and mountains to make good use of all of it. But then again, as the Inca, you have to start bias to get that stuff, and that's that's already good. I'd say Incas are a good mid tier sieve, probably. <sighs> Coffee is a plantation resource. Those are in, are camps. Don't is this coast down there? No, what is for settler? Oh, it doesn't show fresh water because I'm in because I'm Maya. So I can't even check where where a river or a coast is. So I can't check where bad land is. I want to know if this is coast because I don't want any water nearby. Ugh. It has the hills, but still the campus will be mediocre. And I would rather settle on this than work this. 
Why are there no plantation? I want the plantation start. Yeah, I mean, I think Incas either go for a science victory or a religious victory. That's two things they could do. From the first stirrings of life beneath water. That's true. I could do the, the amenity saddle. The point is amenities are, are not usually a big problem. Mm, and the truffles would allow me to go for Temple of Artemis. Temple of Artemis is amazing for Maya. Although, in theory, I would rather have it in an expansion than in my capital. Because my capital doesn't get this 10% benefit. Only the other cities get it. In theory, I want another city to have the Temple of Artemis. Have an amazing campus. Build Oxford. And just get ridiculous with Pingala. That would be... The I don't have a word for this. Insert random Latin word for really good. <laughs> oh yeah, that's. I think the Incas are really fun. In theory, also a tall Sif, but um. In general, it's. Paul doesn't really get rewarded except for one city. Pingala rewards going tall in that city where he is in. But very very few traits and mechanics reward you for having lots of population. Because having more population doesn't give you more science. Like in Civ 5. That's, that's why many Civ 5 players struggle with Civ 6. Because they're used to their science buildings giving them more science based on population. That makes it obvious you want to grow your cities big because it's very rewarding. If you also get a percentage bonus on top of that, like you get from the university and certain wonders and and later on the the research lab also gives a sci percentage science bonus. That's really good to grow tall. While here, there's only one single wonder that gives you a percentage bonus and um korea and scotland gets percent bo percentage bonus besides that only pingala does for that one city where he is in and there is no mechanic that would give you more science just because you have more population you could argue that gilgamesh would profit from it because the more population he has, the more ziggurats he can work. But since ziggurats can't be placed on hills, if you work like a bunch of ziggurats, your city will have garbage production. And for a scientific victory, you want science and production. You want science to unlock all the techs you need, and you want production to build all the all the, the, the moon landing and the rockets and all the later stuff to boost to boost them um, these projects that allow you to get to get quicker in the late game I don't know what its names oh my god what is this nonsense you I mean a Petra city, I guess, it, no, it's, it's bad because I can't even build farms on desert. Ew. Incense. Far up. Uh, uh. Okay. Ew. Okay, this is enough. I want to know Maya start bias. Maya start bias. Save. Save six. I write in Civ 6 and uh, Google gives me tons of Civ 5 results. It's probably too early to, to check that out, right? Um, ok. 
Okay, let's search in the wiki. Maya. It's not in yet. Okay. Then let's go back to Google and adjust the search. Anytime, no how about past 24 hours. Yeah, it's, there's no information out on that yet, but I start to doubt that they have you. that they have um, plantation start bias, which would, I'm sorry, I hate to say it, but it would catapult them to low tier sieve. It would put them on the level of, yeah, it would put them, well, not as bad as Tamar, but they get close. The unique unit is good, but they're shit for domination because they get penalties on all their cities they conquer that are too far away. So yeah, they have no cultural benefits. So that's out of the question. They have no religious benefits, so that's out of the question. They have a camp, a science benefit, but it's so highly RNG. And so far, most of my starts didn't really have that many plantations. I didn't get that that Brazil start that is full of dice and or full of spices and banana. That would be ridiculous. If I could just steal Brazil's start location with the Maya, that would be great. Because they get they have a strong jungle start bias. And jungle tends to have plantation. Yeah, I think mo most luxuries on jungle are plantations. <laughs> I I'm actually quite sad about this because I, I love the idea of a tall sieve. I love that they get a penalty as well. That's why I, oh, I, I still love uh, Mali, even though I think they're kind of bad. Because they make you play different. And I like that. When the Sif rewards you for playing different. When you, I, I hate nothing more than when there are multiple civilizations and you play them in an identical way. When there's an optimal way to play a bunch of Sifs. And it's the same optimal play. I, I really don't like that. And that's why I love civilizations like this that tell you, hey, here you're gonna plan your cities and everything completely different. And that's really cool. I just think the reward for doing so is... What is this? The Pantanal oh, is this is... <laughs> okay, we get a natural wonder. Planet, and perhaps the least known area of the world. Okay. Oh, okay, I like that, I like that. That's plus four. So, um, where do I want to settle? Because if I settle on this forest, then I can build another district here and then this will be plus five okay okay I think this is what we take and we take this into the next episode see you next time